Welcome back to the garage everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It is just me today. There is no Kieran as you can see. But what we do have is the Suzuki Address 110 and a question related to the rear brake shoes. Um, one of our viewers has asked how you would go about changing those. And I'll be honest, at this point I've no idea. I've never looked at this before. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this together and see if we can work it out. So let's get on. So the first thing to determine is if these brakes actually need replacing and the easy way to do that is to use the marks provided on the bike itself. So you can see just here there is a little line. I have highlighted mine with Tipex just so you can see that but that is cast into the metal. There's also a little arrow there which is cast into the metal and again I've highlighted that with Tipex. And then here on the actuating arm itself is a pointy bit which again is highlighted with Tipex. So what happens is, as I put the brakes on and off, you'll be able to see that this um, little arm here moves up and down in this range a little bit. Now, with the brakes fully on, you can see that the point a bit is slightly above this little arrow that's cast in here. So I've got some life left in my brakes. But if this were to be pointing directly at the arrow there, then that's the point at which the brake shoes need to be replaced. To do this job we are of course going to remove the rear wheel which is held on with this big nut just here. But to get to that nut and to get the wheel out of the wheel well we are going to have to remove the exhaust. So that's our first job. So what do we need to know before we take the exhaust off? Well, this bike is fuel injection so it has a lambda sensor which fits into the exhaust somewhere near the engine block and that has an electrical connection on it which uh, has a white plug joining it to the main wiring loom and um, that lives somewhere sort of around here it's very difficult to show you on film but if you have a look under there you will see a single wire with a small white electrical connection on it and then other than that there are two 10 mil nuts holding the exhaust on at the engine end and here where it mounts there are two 14 mil nuts or bolts or one or the other let's go with bolts so here we are then this is where I am and I've just been rooting around under here to find the electrical connection I just mentioned and I've managed to unplug that there so that's what you're looking for it has a thin single blue wire underneath the black sheath and that's the connection itself so that uh, that's undone so the only thing now is to go under and do the 10 mil bolts and then we'll come back here and do the 14s there we are then there's the exhaust off it's a good opportunity to clean all of this while it's off uh, mine also looks like it's starting to rust a little bit so I might do something about that Going up here to where it joins the engine block, you can see the lambda sensor here with the wire attached and a little bit more clearly now you can see the little white electrical connector. So I'm going to put that out of the way and we'll start having a look at this wheel. Okay so to get that rear wheel nut off we are going to have to apply quite a lot of pressure and that's just going to spin the wheel. So what I've done is I've come around here and I've applied the rear brake and I've locked it on with the little jobby so it can go around and attack the wheel nut. Right now I've got the exhaust off, I can tell that that is definitely a 22mm fit in there. So I've had to use the breaker bar to loosen this off, it was very tight. But I have loosened that off now so it should just come off with the normal uh, ratchet. And what we've got is the nut and a washer, so the washer was on first and then the nut. Now we've got that wheel nut off then, I've just released the brake up at the front. And I'm also going to back off this adjuster down here so as to give myself the best options for getting the wheel off. So with the wheel nut and the spacer removed, the rear brake's been released up at the front and I've also wound off the adjuster. We should just be able to pull this wheel off in this direction. Just like that. So with the wheel off, we can now see the brake shoes themselves. That's the whole point of this job. We're going to try and get those off now. First thing I'm going to do then is completely remove the adjuster nut to make sure there's absolutely no tension left in this system. So there we are. I've taken the adjuster nut off and removed this piece here. 
For anyone that's interested, I'm just going to show you quickly how the rear brake drum works. As you pull on the lever, it actuates the arm there, which, I don't know if you can see that, it moves a cam, which pushes the brake shoes out against the internal line of the brake drum. So that's how that works. So we're going to have a go now at removing the brake shoes. They're not screwed on or bolted on or anything. There are a couple of springs here and here, and it's basically the spring tension that keeps them in place. So to remove those, it's a case of working it this way, working it that way, and sort of fiddling it off the, off the connections there. So this is the cam that turns, which actuates the brake itself, and then there's just a little post here, so it's a case of just working them off. Once the spring tension's gone, it's fairly easy to just pull those this way. With the brake shoes off, it's a good opportunity to just get a little um, nylon brush or something, or an old toothbrush, and just have a little go around in here. Just be careful that you're not breathing in any brake dust, it's not particularly nice stuff. So now we're going to have a go at putting the new brake shoes on. These are obviously not new, these are my old ones, but it's just the same process. Uh, we'll try and get it on, it's a bit fiddly. Also apologies if you're picking up any wind noise, it is uh, tremendously windy outside. So to put these on, um, it's a case of working them over the, the cam here and just this little post here. Probably easier to start at the cam end. So we'll put those in like this and then work them over the post, overcoming the spring tension. There we are. So there's the new brake shoes installed. So while we've got the wheel off, I'm just using the same nylon brush to uh, clean out the inside of the brake drum there. It's just got a bit of brake dust. Time to put the wheel on then. It's uh, splined, so it's just a case of lining the splines up and slotting it back on. that on and then we need the washer and the nut so there's the washer and there's the nut so tightening this um, wheel nut up means spinning the wheel so what I'm just doing is counter holding the wheel to tighten that up and I don't have a manual for this so I don't know what the specified torque setting is but let's just say pretty tight I'm back round at this side of the bike then and I'm reattaching all of this business down here. So I've got the adjuster nut back on and I'm going to adjust the rear brakes in the normal way. So the wheel is free to spin at the moment and I'm going to adjust that, tighten that up until it sort of stops. Let's go a bit more. There we are, so that wheel's locked now. I can't actually turn that wheel. And then I'm gonna back it off. It's moving now, but snagging. I'm gonna back it off another bit. And a bit more. And just a little bit more. So I set mine so that it, I can feel it just starting, just starting to engage. Um, it's hard to explain that without you actually being here to feel it. But you can see that the wheel will spin, but it is just ever so slightly touching on the brake shoes, which means when I apply the brake lever, the action stops the bike straight away. So the brakes are applied more or less straight away. So if you just put some new brake shoes on, you'll be able to see at this point with the brake on, if you were to apply the brake, you'd be able to see that this uh, little pointer would be further up here than it was originally. It should be further away from this arrow and uh, further up here. Probably not all the way up there, but somewhere in the middle perhaps. So now I've got to put the exhaust back on and I'm going to work that into position and then I'm going to put the two big um, bolts that hold it nearer the rear wheel. I'm going to just put those loosely in position for now so that I can get the nuts in that are nearer to the engine side of things. I'll probably tighten those ones up first and then come back for the mounting ones near the rear wheel. The ones near the engine block, again, I don't have a torque setting for those. I'm not working from a manual, 
Uh, but what I will say for those is you don't want to absolutely monkey those on tight. They don't want to be super, super tight. You kind of want to nip those up and then maybe just a little fraction more. The ones at the back you can probably do fairly tight, but is it really necessary? So there we are, everything's back on. You probably saw at the end there that as I was tightening these two, I was tightening one a little bit and then another one and then this one and then this one and then this one and then this one and this one until I was happy that they're both tight. I also did that on the 10 mil nuts that were um, at the engine side of the exhaust. It's just a good rule to work to if ever there's more than one fixing. Don't just fix one all the way down and then the other two because things might end up wonky. Always work your way around as best you can so that things sit nice and flush. So there we are, that's us back where we started and the important thing when you're doing your brakes is always to test them before you are riding the bike. Uh, we have mentioned that before, uh, but just make sure that you know that the brakes are definitely working and going to stop you before you get out riding. So that's the end of that job, um, it wasn't too bad in the end, it was all fairly straightforward. Hopefully it was helpful and if you've got any more questions about the Suzuki, uh, leave a comment and if you've got any more questions about any of the stuff that we drive or ride, just leave us a comment, we always like to hear from you. So that's it, I shall see you on the next one. Ta-da!